day. Thank you so much for joining me today for our early learning live at 930. My name is Chloe. We do this every day and it's going to be at 930. Hi. I don't know if this has been recording. It just said live now. So if it hasn't been recording, welcome. But if it hasn't been, then Welcome. Thank you for joining me on this Earth Day. Um, today we are going to be talking about the water cycle. In particular, we're going to make some water cycle bags and I'm also going to demonstrate what that looks like. So get ready. We're going to be reading A Drop of Water by Gordon Morrison. A child's finger is wet, water from a meadow brook. The water moves down the small finger and a drop of water begins to form on the tip. Can you see the drop of water? Above the child, clouds that brought rain move apart. The rain is stopping. The sun is coming out. A passing shower has cooled a summer day. Drifting away, the clouds pass over land, forest, and mountain. Everything is wet from the rain clouds. A red-tailed hawk soars toward a nearby mountain. Can you spot the hawk? On the mountaintop, rain water flows out of a forest of spruce and fir trees with its cool, evergreen-scented air. Down the mountainside, it trickles from soil and rock, through cracks and crevices, into a mountain stream. Croak, croak. Ravens call out as they fly from the mountainside. Can you spot the ravens? Have you seen a raven recently? The stream tumbles over a cliff, and the place echoes with the sound of water falling onto rocks below. A cluster of birch trees stands in the midst of a small waterfall. Bubbles form from the splashing water, drift on ripples into a mountain pool. A thrush perches on a birch branch with hanging catkins. A red fox drinks from the pool near the ferns and the mountain laurel. From the pool, the water travels down through the forest. In a flat open area, it slowly spreads and mixes with the cold, still, tea-colored water of an upland bog. A moose pauses in its feeding. Pitcher plants grow in sphagnum moss. A flycatcher flies from its perch on Labrador tea to catch an insect. The bog is part of a beaver pond. A beaver dam made of branches and mud keeps the water from rushing away. Flowers of blue flag blossom around gnawed tree stumps. The smooth surface of the water reflects forest, mountain, and sky. So there's our little beaver dam over here. Water seeping out through the dam rushes downstream. Over and around rocks, it babbles along through changing woodland of sugar maple and yellow birch trees. A water thrush bobs along the rocks by a vibranium shrub. A long-tailed weasel eats a small fish caught in one of many pools. At the woodland edge, the stream slows and spreads into a shallow lowland swamp. It's a watery place of quiet and mystery, where red maple trees stand above, a thicket of blueberry shrubs and tusra grass. Deer drink at its edge. A barred owl roosts by its cavity and in a dead tree. And a flock of mallard ducks are babbling, surface feeding in the open water. Can you see the ducks? They're kind of bobbing around. You can see some of their little duck butts. From the swamp, the shallow water spreads into an open area of tall grass-like plants, a meadow marsh. The chatter and chirping of nesting birds fill the air. 
A marsh wren scolds a red-winged blackbird. The blackbird has flown too close to the wren's nest, hidden in the cattail plants. Brush, bulrush, tall and slender, makes perfect reflection in the still water. Can you see that little hiding nest? It's right over there. I'm also gonna take this off, it's getting in my way. The marsh is part of a farm pond. A farmer's dam made of wood and earth keeps the water from rushing away. The pond is deep and wide. Yellow pond lilies float on its surface. Holstein cows drink from it. Barn swallows also drink from it and catch flying insects above it. And a meadowlark sings its sweet song from a fence post. From the barn doorway, the farmer looks out over his pond and meadows. Curling over the dam, water flows from the pond. Passing under a bridge, it meanders, gently twists and turns past timothy grass, painted turtles, leopard frogs, and a child crouching by the meadow brook. Can you see the child? Does he look familiar to you, maybe? And from the child's finger trip, falls a drop of water. This is a beautiful book. If you don't have it, I would highly recommend it. It also has a little appendix at the very end that teaches you all about the different animals that we've talked about today, as well as some of the different plants. And some of them I wasn't even familiar with, so I had a tough time pronouncing them, but they have all kinds of descriptions in this one. So I really like this book. I think this is a good one. So today we learned all about the flow of that drop of water and where it came from, right? So that's a cycle that we know as the water cycle. So we're gonna talk about that today as we celebrate our Earth Day while we social distance. So it's gonna start with the ocean, right? Or any kind of large body of water, if that's where we wanna think of it as starting. And the sun will heat it up and that'll cause water vapor to rise from that. And that's called evaporation. And then from there, it's going to condensate into clouds. So the clouds are going to be what we're gonna call condensation. They're pulling all of that water vapor into one place. But eventually that cloud gets a little heavy of that water vapor and that's when we're going to start to see some precipitation. And that's what we call rain. Now you can make your own water cycle bag. There's going to be a write-up online for this activity, but you just need a little Ziploc bag a marker and you can draw some waves at the bottom. I've added some blue food coloring to it and that's just so you can see how the water vapor is going to respond in the bag. So you can take this up to a window that gets a lot of sunlight and it's going to heat the water in the bag and that will cause evaporation. So we're not going to see the water vapor evaporate from the big water below, but you're gonna see it condensate and eventually drip down in precipitation. So you're going to be able to get that right up online. And I also have a little demonstration. Sorry, I talked away from the camera. We're also gonna have a little demonstration using this. Not sure if you can see that, I will hold it up for you. But I also have some shaving cream. If you have this at home, you can definitely do this at home. I think this is kind of a fun activity to try. All right, so I'm just going to be filling the lid or the top of my water with some shaving cream. I'm just gonna fill it up. Now this shaving cream is going to be acting as my cloud. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I've got my water with a layer of shaving cream on top. And I have some blue food coloring here. Now this blue food coloring is going to kind of be like our rain. And so when those rain clouds, our shaving cream gets too heavy with my food coloring here, it's going to start to drip and seep down below it. Can you see that? Oh, here, let me spin it to the way where you're not seeing the numbers. Looks like my rain clouds were getting a little heavy and started to drip all of that really nice food coloring down. So this is also a fun activity that you can do at home. Again, you just need something kind of wide enough for you to be able to put some shaving cream on top and you also need some food coloring. And it's just a good way to show how rain clouds, when they have too much in them, they start to fall. 
Thank you so much for watching this today. If you like this one, please be free to check out the rest of our content that we're going to be putting out. We do early learning live demos every morning at 930. And we also have our live demos at 1pm. And if you really like Earth Day, we do have an Earth Day challenge going on right now on our Instagram. So be sure to check that out at AZ Science. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.